I don't know, like three in the morning or something like that, when this thing came out, I said, where's the money coming from? But it's an important question. And they have question. not responded, folks. You have not responded, FDIC. Hello? Mark, <laughs> um, Tim, do you have any theories? Tim, let me turn to you. Oh, uh, I, I have no idea. I have no idea. I mean, it's coming from a fund that the banks pay into to cover the deposit insurance for, for their members, just in case some of these scenarios could occur from. But I'm not sure where the money's coming from in this instance. And Tim, how would you categorize what's happening with deposits across the country, broadly speaking, now? Well, they're, they're reacting to, one, higher rates, right? Um, as banks are typically slow to do in a tightening cycle, they don't raise rates or deposit costs until the tail end of the cycle, and that's happening right now. At the same time, the Federal Reserve is also shrinking the money supply, and so that's causing some movement around in deposits. This situation right here is a, a bit unique because we've had, uh, we had a run on the bank in Silicon Valley Bank, and we had, you know, the spillover effects onto First Republic. So what should normally take months for deposits to move and reprice is actually happening in a matter of weeks. And I think that's kind of creating some of the anxiety that we're seeing in the regional bank space. Do you, Tim, have the same concern that Mark does about the potential for more bank failures? Because I have to, to say, from the bank experts I talk to, there is such a wide range of opinion. There's people who are very, it's, and it's almost like the more specialist people are, the less concerned they mm -hmm. are. The people standing back and looking at the whole <laughs> landscape are going, this is crazy, more bad stuff's going to happen. And all the banking experts are going, no, this all seems fine to us. And if anything, the banks are a buyer. Well, so you know, let's step back here for a minute, right? What happened at Silicon Valley Bank was a tech, was a traditional run on the bank, right? It happened in unique and modern ways, but still a textbook run on the bank. Same thing at First Republic. Now, what these two companies have in common is that they both grew very quickly during a low interest rate environment, near zero, right? I, I'd love to tell you that they were the only two doing it. And of course, I'm excluding Silvergate, I'm excluding Signature Alice conversation, because their problems were kind of their own. But there were other banks that grew quickly in a zero interest rate environment, but the vast, vast majority of the regional and the small banks in this country were not trying to pick up pennies in front of a steamroller. Mark, do you want to respond to that and talk about why you're sort of more on the concern side, seeing the potential for more failures? I, I would say that I think there's actually, you know, a fair amount of agreement. And, you know, to the, those who would say banks are a good buy, I would say some are a good buy, some are not. And so there's a small segment that I think that there's real problems in. But I would agree with the point I think Tim is making that broadly the sector is overall going to make it through, which is why I don't think this is systemic. But there's definitely six to 12 that are real problems, that half of them are not going to make it through this cycle. It's even important to remember, you know, by the time Lehman failed back in 2008, we'd already lost two million jobs. Mm -hmm. We've seen no real job loss yet. And so a lot of this will depend on, do we go into a recession? Do we start to see job loss? Most of this has been interest rate mark to market loss. We haven't seen real credit losses, which I think are going to show up in commercial real estate. So I would say, while I think the overall sector is going to make it through, and I don't think this is a systemic issue, it's really a handful you got to keep an eye on. And by the way, uh, Steve, we now know that the Fed itself was told this, that there was an 11-page presentation given by staffers mm. to the board, which they have posted for the public to review to their credit, yes. where in this it literally lays out piece by piece and, and calls out 31 banks in particular that had negative tangible equity at the end of the third quarter. So the bank they, and we all now know this, the bank they chose to highlight as the most at risk was Silicon Valley Bank. Now, presumably, if they made this presentation to the board, then Powell and what is it, the five other members, I don't think Brainerd, I don't know if Brainerd was there at the time, they all heard this presentation. So the question to him on Wednesday, don't you think, has to be, if you literally were told that this is probably coming, why was there no plan? What did you do? Right. What did you do How as a result? Prepare? Did you call your supervisors up and tell them to sharpen your pencils when it comes to interest rate risk management? Right. Apparently, according to that report, they were going to have a cross-sectional, sorry, horizontal review in the first quarter. Um, I, by the way, asked a senior Fed official about this question, about whether or not the uh, report looked at Fed leadership, and it did not, apparently. Mm. And I asked um, why no action was taken. I was told it was an information presentation, not an action presentation. Mid-February. When I told my happen. wife that, she said to me, well, when I tell you the garbage is full, is that an informational presentation <laughs> or is that an action presentation? I do want to get to one, one important question here, which is this. Um, uh, where's the money going? To the extent that we have or do not have an uninsured deposit problem in the banks, I think it's going into things like money markets. Mm -hmm. And to me, money markets, especially government money markets, are an economic dead end when it comes to lending. So I think part of the fallout here 
if Except Mark doesn't government. get yeah. his four or five failures, and I'm pointing over here, you can see that I'm pointing at the, at the screen. I don't know if we have that on television here. Touché. They have that. There we go. Touché. See, I'm pointing to Mark. But anyway, the point is that if he doesn't get them, it's because the money went out. That's good. But where did it go? Did it go to a place where it can help the economy, have a multiplier effect, or not?